Hi, this is Justin from Roland Pro AV, welcoming you to this tutorial on the V02 HD Mark II. This is a streaming video mixer with two multi format HDMI inputs, which we'll get into the advantages of later, as well as HDMI outputs for displays or monitoring, and a USB C streaming output. This compact unit is packed with features, so we'll start with the controls on the top, and then we will show you the inputs and outputs on the back and side panels. Starting with the top panel, you can see that there are two input buttons, so you can use those to switch between your cameras, as well as a fader bar if you want to do transitions manually, like a dissolve or a wipe. In the top right, you have your menu controls, so you can access the menu. And these are the two outputs up here, which we'll get into in a moment. Up here is preview output, so this displays the green source and the menu. And then down here is program output, which is the red source. This would be what your audience sees on the program HDMI output, as well as the USB streaming output. Up here are effects controls, which we'll get into a bit later when we show you picture in picture. And then you can also change the effects type for the switching controls. And then there's an output fade if you want to fade to black. So on the back, you have two HDMI inputs. And when we talked about multi-format inputs at the beginning, that means that these have scalers. And what those do is they automatically adjust the video. So if the resolution that your camera outputs doesn't match the V02, it will resize it automatically to match the output format. And don't worry, we'll get into all that in a bit when we go through the menu settings. On the program and preview output, which I just pointed to previously, and both HDMI outputs share a separate scaler as well. And then there's a USB streaming output, that USB-C connector. So you can connect that to a computer and use it with uh, streaming software or with video conferencing software. And basically this functions as a webcam carrying video and audio over USB. To the right of that is the foot switch port. And we'll dive into that uh, later in this video. But what that lets you do is you can use a boss foot switch to do the switching for you. So if you wanted to cut or mix dissolve between your two cameras, you could just set that foot switch to do that every time you press on it. And the V02 HD Mark II uses the PSB 1U power supply. So that's the part if you ever need a replacement. And on the side, you have the power switch. There are two eighth inch audio inputs. So those are stereo audio inputs where you can connect a microphone or line level source, and then a headphone jack with a small volume control knob right next to it. To access the menu settings, you'll want to connect the preview HDMI output to a monitor or display. You'll note that output has preview on the bottom center in the screen. So there's a small text that says preview. When you press the menu button, it appears on that screen. And you can then twist and push this knob to navigate the menu. So if I want to go into the video input menu, I just push this in. And if I want to adjust input two, I just select that and push enter again. And then I can adjust these settings. So if I wanted to say flip the video horizontally, I push it. So you see off is highlighted now. And then I twist it and I turned that flip on and then I can push it again to then go to a different setting. To exit the menu, just press the menu button and it will go up one level each time you press it until you completely exit. You can also change menu settings using the free control software solutions. There's the RCS software for Windows and Mac, as well as the remote app for iPad. Both of those will let you access the menu settings through the app. We'll cover those apps in more detail later. Okay, so now that we covered the basics, we're gonna go into um, setting up video and audio sources as well as some relevant menu settings. So you have those two multi-format HDMI inputs. Whatever resolution you bring in to the V02 HD, it will resize it to automatically match the output. And then for those audio inputs, you can connect an external microphone with an eighth inch connector, or you can use an external audio mixer. So let's enter the menu. We're gonna start with the video input menu for input one. And remember, input one is down here on program, and that's the red source. And then 
Input number two is on preview up on this preview output. Input status is helpful for troubleshooting as well as flicker filter and the EDID setting. And we'll cover that separately. Here on this first page, you can flip the video horizontally or vertically. And on page two, you have additional scalar settings. Beyond automatically resizing the video, you can also customize the size and position of the video using the scaler. And input one and two are independent for this. So you'll see as I push this and then twist it, I can move in small increments, or if I hold it down and twist, I can move it uh, faster. In addition to that, I can also change the position and basically set up a new shot without having to zoom with the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset this and show you the remaining settings in the menu. On page three, you have brightness, contrast, and saturation controls, and you can also adjust the color as well. So if you need to fine tune the image without going to the camera, you can make adjustments in this menu. You can also make adjustments to the video outputs by going into the separate video output menu. So we'll look at program output. You have the uh, output status, and this is of course connected down here. And for troubleshooting, you can adjust the color space um, if the uh, colors appear off or if there's a tint on the screen. And for compatibility, you may need to, in rare instances, change the signal type to DVID. And you have the same brightness, contrast, saturation, and color processing as you do with the input. We'll now go to the scaling menu. And here for program and preview output, together you can change their output scaler. So you have this, the zoom, size, and position settings, as well as the format. So if you want this switcher to output, say, a 720p resolution, you would change it in the format. And finally, the USB output has its own settings. So you can assign preview instead of program to the USB output, though in most cases you want to leave it at the default. The output format setting you can change this from YUI2 and Motion JPEG to just YUI2. That gives you an uncompressed USB signal, which may be helpful for video conferencing software compatibility. You also have the status of the output. To stream HD video, you want it to say connected 3.0. And then there's also a connection reset that you can do within the menu. Note that the V02HD Mark II does not come with a USB streaming cable. We have a list on our knowledge base of recommended cables. You want to make sure that the cable has a USB Type-C connector on one end and either a Type-A or Type-C connector on the other end. It's recommended that you connect it directly to your computer and not through any extenders or hubs. If the output status does not say connected 3.0, it's possible that cable is not compatible or you need to try a different USB port on the computer. The audio settings are in two separate menus. We'll start with audio input, which is on the second page of the main menu. So each audio input has its own submenu. These are the two eighth inch audio inputs. The USB streaming output can also bring in audio from the computer it's connected to. And then each HDMI input has audio as well. Going into audio input one, you have a setting for analog gain. So if your microphone's not loud enough, you wanna start by increasing this setting. So you may need to apply 30 to 50 decibels a gain. And then the input level should start at zero. When you use the control software, you have an on-screen mixer that you can use to adjust the fader level. If you wanna mute an input, which is helpful for HDMI inputs, you can turn on mute. And plug-in power is for microphones that use plug-in power. So do not turn this on unless you know your microphone requires plug-in power. Note that plug-in power is not the same as phantom power. There's also a mono setting. So if you have a stereo source coming into that eighth inch input or the HDMI input, which is of course in stereo, you can choose just the left or right channel or mix them together. If you wanna hear one or more sources in your headphones, turn on the solo function. Some helpful troubleshooting too is that if you're only hearing one source in your audio mix, there's a chance that solo is enabled for that source. On the second page, you have effect presets where you can choose different 
settings for the equalizer and compressor so you can dial in your audio quicker uh, with one of those presets. And if the audio is out of sync with the video, you can add some delay and you can see it's uh, listed in milliseconds and frames to help you figure out how much delay you need to add to get it in sync. In the audio output menu, you have an output assignment. So everything's for the main mix. There's also an aux mix as well that we'll cover in a moment. So for the main out, you typically leave the level at zero dB. And you also have mute and delay functions, as well as a limiter in case you have any loud audio that you don't want to cause any peaking or distortion. For the aux audio mix, you're able to send sources to this separate mix. So if you wanted just the microphones and say no music input, you can adjust the send levels for your sources to create what's called a mix minus. Here is an aux send submenu. So you can see they're all turned down by default. So you would just bring it up to zero dB for the sources that you want to become a part of that aux mix. You can also choose whether the effect is before the fader, after the fader, from the main mix's levels. And on the USB output, you have similar settings as you do with the main HDMI output. If you want to adjust your audio levels without going to the RCS software or the iPad remote app, you can press and hold the VFX button. And when it's flashing for the audio in one and audio in two, you can control the level. I'll open the menu so you can see what happens when I do that. So for the eighth inch audio input one, if I hold this button and it starts flashing, I can adjust the audio level in one decibel increments. If you want to customize what those knobs do, go to page two of the system menu and here for audio effects assign, you can change which function is mapped to that knob. Another helpful audio feature is audio follows video. So that's in the audio follow menu. And by default, it's turned off for each audio input. Now, if you turn it on for HDMI input one, the audio that's carried on HDMI input one will be part of the mix whenever HDMI input one is on program, whether it's the input source or part of a picture in picture. So the way to think about audio follows is if you can see it, you can hear it. In addition to having the HDMI audio be active when the video is visible, you can also have the analog audio inputs and incoming USB audio mapped to one of the two inputs or your still image. Now that our video and audio sources are set up, we can start switching. So if you remember from earlier, the red button is the input that's on program and the green button is the input that is on preview. By default, if you press the green button, it turns red and input one cuts to input two on the program output. So you can see that they switch positions. You can also do manual transitions with the fader bar, depending on what the effects type is. So with mix, you can do a dissolve and you can manually control that fade. And with wipe, you can do a manual wipe. Now, if you want these buttons to do the transition instead of the fader bar, if you go into the menu and go to transition time, you see that the default for mix and wipe is zero seconds, making that a cut when you press the green button. But if I increase this to say one second, and then I press it, you can see I have a one second wipe just by pressing the button. You can also set the timing for picture in picture and the key overlay. In addition to that, in the mix wipe menu, you can manually change the mix type between mix and wipe here. So there's different styles of mix transition, but for most applications, you'll leave it on the standard mix. For the wipe type, you can change the direction of the wipe as well as adjust whether there's a border and what color that border is. If you want to automate your video switching, there's also an auto switching function. You can find that in the system menu. So the system menu is all the way at the end of the main menu. 
and you go to page three and you can turn on auto switching. And when you turn it on, the default is input scan and every five seconds it'll go between inputs one and two. You can change this for each individual input as well as the length of the transition time, whether it's a mix dissolve or a wipe. You also have an option to go between preset memories, which we'll cover later. So if you have several memories set up, you can go in between those as well instead of just the inputs. With the USB streaming output connected directly to a computer, you can record or stream that USB video and audio signal using software of your choice or some free solutions from Roland. For Windows, we have Roland Live Streamer and Roland Live Recorder. And for Windows and Mac, we have Video Capture for VR. Additional solutions for streaming and conferencing are OBS Studio, or you can bring it directly into Zoom or Teams. Here we have the Roland Live Streamer software window. It automatically detects the V02HD Mark II. You can adjust the video format, the quality of the stream, and then you put in the RTMP URL and stream key. Those you would get from your streaming service. So when you log into your control panel, you just take that information and paste it into Roland Live Streamer. We're gonna change up the application to show you picture in picture, which is abbreviated as PINP. So to start, I'm gonna press the type button to get to the picture in picture effect. And note that these went from red and green to yellow and off. Up in preview, you can see what the picture in picture looks like before you bring it over to program. You can bring it to program by pressing the two button. You can see the button now turns red and it flashes while it transitions in and out. If you remember earlier from the transition time menu, you can set the length of the picture in picture transition with this setting here. But before I take the picture in picture to air, I wanna adjust the picture in picture settings in the menu. You also have effects controls. These act sort of like a way to quickly adjust the picture in picture window without having to go into the menu. So maybe I wanna put this window on the bottom right. If I wanna make it smaller or larger, I can push and twist. And I can zoom in on it by pushing and twisting the control two knob. But I wanna fine tune this a bit more, so I'm gonna go into the picture in picture menu. Here you can fine tune the position and size manually, as well as set the cropping for the window. So for example, if I wanna make this say 50%, and then on page three, I can adjust the horizontal position to center the gamer in that picture in picture window. So now I have a nicely cropped picture in picture because I don't need the full widescreen image. And so when I bring that to program, you can see there's my picture in picture that's going out on the program and USB streaming output. In addition to that, you can also change the border for the picture in picture, just like you can with the wipes. And once that's set, I can just turn it on and off using this two button while it's in the picture in picture mode. You can also swap which source is in the window and which source is the background by pressing the one button. We're gonna change up applications again to now show you the key function. So what a keyer does is it takes one of the inputs and overlays it on top of the other input and then can remove a color from the source that's on top to help create transparency. That's great if you have a lower third, a logo, or someone in front of a green screen. There's two types. There's Luma key, which can remove white or black from the key source, or there's Chroma key, which can remove any color. To start, we're gonna change the type from mix to key. So you can see that this is a slide from presentation software that's going into input two, and then our camera on input one. So when I go into key mode, you see that the default settings remove the black background from input two. So up on preview, we can see what the graphic would look like before we brought it to air. So just like with picture in picture, you can swap sources with button number one, and you can bring it to air with button number two, or manually use the fader bar. And if you use that two button to bring the key source in, in the transition time menu, you can set the key time 
just like you would with mix wipe or picture in picture. We're now gonna go into the key menu, talk about some of the features here. So the key level sets the amount of removal. The default is a uh, Luma key set to black here. And if I turn this all the way down, it's back to like it was when it was in mix mode. So you can see that that's what the graphic would look like. So if we turned it on, we wouldn't have any transparency. I'm gonna bring it back up to that 64 value. And you can also fine tune it with the gain setting. So if you're not getting a clean key, you can use a combination of these two settings to dial it in. But one of the issues with this graphic is that it has black text, which is being removed in addition to the background. So I actually made an alternate slide that has a bright green background, and I'm gonna use the chroma key to remove it. So here you can see that I now have a green background on this source, and I need to change the key type to chroma. From there, I'm gonna go past to page four and change the color, the default is blue, to green. So now you should be able to remove the green background, but we have to do some additional fine tuning. One way to do this easily is to use the sampling marker. When you turn this feature on, in the center of the screen, there'll be a little arrow. I'm gonna move it so you can see it there. So you just wanna move it to an area that has green and then go to the execute, confirm, and so what it did was it changed the default green setting to match what the actual input was. So for example, that bright green background that I chose didn't match the default green setting. It had a hue setting of 120. And so the chroma sampling marker made additional adjustments, taking the guesswork out. And you can see I have a nice clean key in preview that I can now take to air. So when I press the two button, I have a lower third that I can overlay on my camera feed. For the chroma sampling marker, the same concept applies when setting up a green screen. Once you have your subject lit on the green screen, you would then aim the sampling marker at a green area on that camera image. And then once you run that, it will detect the best settings for your chroma key. We'll go back to our original application here to show you the VFX function. So when I press the VFX button, you can see it's gonna create a mosaic as the default effect. And I can use the control knobs to resize and reposition it. But there's a number of other VFX that are in the VFX menu. So you can see there's part mosaic. I could do a background mosaic to invert it or a full mosaic, and you can control the size of the pixels so the level of detail. In addition to that, you have some visual effects like a wave, color change, you can invert, and you can also change the control type using the control knobs or the menu options. So those knobs control different things depending on the effect that you want to utilize. Next, I'm going to show you how to capture and output a still image. You can see on HDMI output 2 that I have a band logo. Let's say I have this image on a laptop. I can bring it in via HDMI and capture it before the show. To do that, I'm going to go into the capture menu. And from there, I'm going to change the capture source to input 2. Because remember, this logo is on HDMI input 2 because it's up in preview, and that's the green source. Before I capture it, you can decide whether you want to save to internal storage. Now, if you save to internal storage, the max resolution is 640 by 360, so it will reduce the size of the image, but it'll stay in the memory. If you disable this setting, it'll be the full 1920 by 1080, but when you power off the VO2 HD and turn it back on again, the still image will not be there. Now that I'm ready to capture, I just say yes, it takes about 30 seconds to capture most images and note that the program output is not frozen while it's doing the capture. Now that it's complete, I can access it using the output fade knob. You may remember from earlier that if I turn this knob all the way to the left, it fades program output to black along with the audio. 
If I turn it all the way to the right, it'll output the still image. There's also some other things that I can do with this output fade knob within the system menu. So when I go to system, you'll see on the first page, output fade assign. So the default for turning to the left is fade to black and fade out audio. But when you turn it to the right for still image, it won't fade out the audio. If you want to fade out the audio as well, all you have to do is change it to still image and audio. If you want to save all your settings so that you can recall them later, you can use the preset memory menu. From here, you can load all your current settings to a user memory, also known as scenes, and there are eight slots available. Now, if you change your settings, when you go to load and you load that memory, you'll see that the settings are recalled to what they were when we saved it. Initialize will erase the memory that you have in one of those eight slots, and you can also rename the memories. This next setting, startup, is important. By default, it's set to last memory, which means that when you turn off the switcher, the settings that you had when you turned it off will be there when you turn it back on, kind of like autosave. If you wanted to boot to specific settings every time, you can choose one of the eight memories and have that be loaded every time it boots up. And memory protect prevents any additional changes. If you want a memory to fade when you recall it, say you have a picture in picture, or different configuration, then you can set a fade time for that as well. On the next page is the load parameter menu. What this allows you to do is disable certain sections of the menu when you recall a preset. So while it saves all those settings when you save the preset, for example, if you don't want the audio settings to be part of your recalls, you can simply just turn these three off and now whenever you recall a preset, your audio settings are unaffected. If you use these preset memories, say for different picture in picture positions, it can be helpful to recall them using the RCS software or the remote app, which we'll show you later in this video. But for now, I'm gonna recall some presets using the menu. You can see from memory two that I have it on HDMI input two as program. Memory three, goes back to HDMI input one as program, and then turns on a picture in picture for the uh, HDMI input two. In memory four, this is where you see the fade time take effect. Picture in picture goes out and is repositioned up top. So I can easily access those presets using the software, or you can use the menu to recall them. Next, I'm gonna show you how to set up and use a boss foot switch to control the V02 HD. Here I have a Boss FS5U. This model has a single switch on it. The FS6 has two switches. There are also some expression pedals where you put your foot on it and rock it back and forth, and you can use that to control this as well. I'm using a quarter inch instrument cable to connect it to the back of the V02HD. Notice that when I press the button, nothing happens yet because we need to set it up. To do that, I'm gonna go into the CTL EXP menu on the second page here. So you can see that it's turned off and I'm gonna to need to turn it on for control. CTL is for the foot switch models and then EXP is for the expression pedal models. Now, when using the FS5U, you will only change the value for CTLB. CTLA will not do anything. That's if you have the FS6 and you have the two button model, you can set both up to do different things. Right now, it's set up to select input one which of course is already on program. And you have different options within each category of what you wanna change. For this setup, I'm gonna to go to the second option, take, and I have it set to auto take. For most applications, this will probably be the foot switch setting you wanna use the most. Watch what happens when I press the button. So it now cuts between inputs one and two, and you can see that I'm not touching the switcher. It's all done with the foot switch. Now that auto take function relies on the transition time setting for mix wipe time. If I bring that up to one second, you can see here that it's a dissolve. And if I have it set to wipe, then it will do a wipe. In the CTL EXP menu, there are additional functions that you can map to these buttons. 
So you can choose between the effects type, still image. You have audio control functions, including voice changer for the audio inputs. So you have a number of options that you can use when configuring the foot switch for your workflow. A helpful feature in the V02HD system menu is called panel lock. If I go down here to the system menu on the second page, you'll see on page two that there's a sub menu called panel lock. When any of these options are turned on, the physical control on the panel will be locked and no longer function. For example, if I accidentally hit this fade to black and I don't want that to happen again because I don't use it as part of my workflow, I can turn output fade on, and now this knob doesn't do anything. This can be a helpful addition to your workflow when there's only a few functions that you want to use on the panel. Up until this point, we've showed you how to do everything using the controls and the menu on the V02HD Mark II. But as mentioned throughout this video, you can also use software control. We have the RCS software for Windows and Mac and the remote app for iPad. The RCS software you can download from the product page and the remote app from the App Store. The RCS software and remote app are nearly identical in the way that they look and operate. So for this demo, we're going to use the RCS software. We're connecting to it using the same USB stream cable that's connected to the computer. So you can record or stream at the same time as using the RCS software. If you're using the remote iPad app, you're going to need to instead connect that USB cable to an adapter that has lightning on one end and USB type A on the other. Once you have that connected, you can use an iPad to control the switcher, but you will not be able to stream or record using that USB output. When you open the RCS software or remote app, you'll see in the top right corner that it'll say online if you're connected. From the main screen, you have access to controls like you do on the hardware. So you can switch using the mouse or your finger as well as the effects type settings. So here you can see all the different wipe settings, so you can quickly change them. So the RCS software and remote app are a great way to experiment with different settings. Here you have the picture and picture controls where you can also move and resize the picture and picture window from the software, as well as the keyer settings where you can set the sampling marker position There are also two arrows, so if you click on this right arrow, notice that the top section stays the same. So your output fade, the auto switching function is conveniently placed here, and of course your preset memories. To recall a preset memory, you just click and it'll recall it. And of course, also you have access to the uh, setup menu as well. And from here, you can pull up the setup menu and go into the different menus as you would with the menu knob. So you can see on the audio mixer screen that you have faders, so you can control levels, as well as a setup screen, which is like a channel strip. So you can set the equalizer, the compressor, and the noise gate, and also call up effects presets. So if you want to quickly dial in your sound, you can do that by starting off with the preset. So this can be a helpful way to quickly dial in your audio settings by using this RCS software and you can jump from channel to channel using these green arrows. This is also a helpful way to set up a mix minus. So here, as I mentioned earlier in the video, when you wanna set up sends to the aux channel, you are able to do it all on one screen using this aux setup menu. On the leftmost screen, you have all your preset memories. Here, you can change the name of each preset you can name input one and two as well as the still image, and you can save and erase these memory slots. And all you have to do is click on it to recall it. So you can see here, I have some various picture in picture presets, expanding on what I set up earlier in the video, and then also some of the VFX. So here I have some of the various VFX mapped to presets as well. So you can get pretty creative with the memory presets and configure them to your workflow. To receive notifications of firmware updates, make sure to register your product at roland.com backstage. Whenever a firmware update is released, you'll get an email notification. To download the latest firmware for your V02HD Mark II, just go to proav.roland.com 
Go to products along the top and choose video switchers. Scroll down until you see the VO2 HD Mark II. And this is the product page. So be sure to bookmark it. From there, you'll see downloads. And when you click on downloads, there are two things that you need to download. The first is the V02 HD Mark II utility for Windows or Mac. You'll use that to apply the update. Also note that this is where you download the RCS software that we just demoed. And up here is the V02 HD Mark II system program. This is the firmware file. So when you click on this, it'll take you to a download page with update instructions. There are also update instructions available on the knowledge base. To download, just check the box and then the orange download button. From there, you will unzip the file and you will access it using the utility software. When you install and open the utility software, the default mode is to back up and restore your settings. To get into update mode, what you want to do is power off your V02 HD Mark II, press and hold the VFX button, turn the power on, and then let go of VFX. You'll now see that it says update. From there, I can click on this update button, choose the file that I downloaded on my computer, and once you have that .bin file loaded, you can start the update here. The process takes about three minutes. When it's finished, it'll ask you to restart your V02 HD Mark II, and then you'll have the latest firmware when you turn it on again. And that concludes this tutorial on the V02 HD Mark II streaming video mixer. I hope this presentation was informative and helpful, but if you have additional questions, please check out the links in the description of this video, and be sure to visit roland.com backstage where you can contact product support. Thank you for watching.